Hi guys, welcome back. Hope you're all safe and well. I'm Ben, this is the Shroom Lagoon. Now, in this video, I'm just gonna give you a quick update to the tank. It's been around four weeks since the last one. The tank's coming up into probably week 10, 11 now. So there's been a lot of mushrooms added. There's been a few changes to equipment. There's been a few small issues on the way, which I'll discuss later. Um, so yeah, basically just wanna bring you all up to speed show you how the tank's changing show you how it's evolving talk about any future plans i'll cover the filtration quickly and just briefly go over the maintenance what i do to the tank to get it to where it is now so before we jump into all that i just want to say a massive thanks to all the support so far it's been a little bit overwhelming We've got plenty of subscribers getting loads of input loads of comments i love it keep them coming if you're not already subscribing please think about do so you know, it really helps supports me hit the bell notification so every time i do one of these you'll be notified give me a thumbs up really appreciate it so yeah that out of the way let's jump into the tank i think we'll jump into the cabinet i'll show you what's changed show you a few bits of equipment and then we'll jump around the tank and show you the mushrooms and the nice bits of sound cheers for watching guys so let's show you the equipment then so first things first, I've upgraded the auto top off reservoir from an old citric acid container to a fancy white bucket. Now this fancy white bucket's food safe, holds 10 litres of water, you know, perfect for this size tank really. It's not the prettiest but it does the job. Got my little Tunzi pumps, it's nice in there, little hole cut out the lid to fit around the pipe work. Um, Aquariums for Life, the manufacturer of this system, they are building me a custom glass auto top off reservoir that's going to sit in here it's got some sliding lids it's going to come out to here so i can just slide the lid back fill it up and it's going to hold about 25 30 liters which is going to be enough for probably two three weeks in this size tank but obviously you know with the quality of these systems and you know the way they build stuff they're inundated with work at the minute so that's in the near future so as soon as that gets here i'll do a quick video and show it you but for now i'll have to make do with my fancy white bucket now, next bit of equipment you notice it's changed from the last video is I've added a little doser. Uh, it's just a little P1 from D&D &D and Kamoa. Yeah, they're solid little units. I've used two on I used two on my frag system. You know, nothing fancy. Little Bluetooth doser. This one was actually from a local reefer. I picked up slightly used, um, and he threw in the dosing container as well. So couldn't argue with it really. Yeah, you know, I'm only dosing six mil a day. Of alkalinity just to it just keeps it from dipping between water changes and obviously as you know the more stable that is the better it's not life and death with a softy tank but you know it does make a big difference and the shrooms do respond to more stability so that's that's what that is um a lot of people ask me what a dose alkalinity wise i just use this the nios alkalinity ball in salts i've used these for ever you know not sponsored by them i have to buy it you know it's good stuff pure mixes well you know no issue so again nothing fancy no trace elements added but you know it does what it's supposed to do so that's the what i use for alkalinity everything else is pretty much the same um if you notice this little tonsy safety connector there that's linked up to the mighty jet now i'm not going to go over it massively in this video because i did a whole video previously showing how i built the battery back up but this is all, it's all neat now and all put away. Batteries are tucked away behind there. Now, the charger is something I did so mention in a previous tank, previous video. So um, what I'm actually doing with this, I was going to hook it up permanently, but there's no need. These UASA batteries hold a charge really well. Um, I've only done it once or twice since I've set the unit up. When I'm doing my water change, I literally just clip the crocodile clips onto the batteries at the back, plug it in, and within 10 minutes, they're topped up and up to fully charged so you could leave it on and it would just sit on float charge constantly but again as you can see i'm already running out of plugs and i don't want to add another one permanently so that's more than adequate does the job fine um yeah that pretty much sums it up i've left everything like this everything's tucked away neat now the reason i've done this and the reason i've left this connector here is obviously with a return pump hooked up to the battery backup i can't if i turn it off at the plug it just runs off the battery so if i want to turn it off during water changes or anything all i have to do is just simply just pull that connection apart so it's no no issues at all um other equipment everything's working as it should the you know no problems with the mighty jet i'm loving the little nero three so much i've actually added another one to my little frag tank for the sump 
Um, Osmolator again, you know, working flawlessly. Really, still, you know, still pleased with the thermo control. That pretty much covers the equipment. What well, it does in the sump anyway. Um, food. Just the Vitalis. You know, I've used that for a number of years. I am feeding some frozen, but this tank gets fr um, frozen once a day and flakes once a day. So all the fish I've got in there take flakes. So that's it. Um, little book here is just. I've probably shown you this before. It's, you know, it's, again, I think it's a good idea. I just monitor my uh, parameters and anything I add to the tank, any changes. You know, it's handy to look back. You know, in a month's time, if something does go wrong, I can look back and think, oh yeah, that's when I added that fish, or that's when I added that mushroom. So that covers the equipment. So we'll jump up to the tank. I'll clip the lens on, and then we'll go through the um, the mushrooms, and I'll show you what's changed up there. So here it is, guys. The good bit, the bit you've been waiting for. As you can see, it's filling in really well now. Really pleased with how it's turned out and how it's starting to look. I've added probably 95% of my collection now. I have got others to go in, but for the time being, I just want to let everything settle now and hopefully let a few things move around and hopefully reproduce and possibly leave some babies behind. So I don't want to overcrowd things just yet. So I've added a couple of really nice eclectus you can see there just below that bounce. Some lovely discosomas up this corner. Moving down, there's big redactuses here and there. Record your gardens doing really nice now. A few of those have settled in and colouring up really nicely. So you can't miss this big bounce at the front. A couple of little babies off that one. A teeny baby off it there as well on that rock. Again, a couple of really, really big redactors. These are probably the biggest ones in my collection. This lavender one down the front. If I just pop up over the top, you see the size of this thing. It's around probably four four and a half inches across now the frankenstein behind it a few nice discosoma down this corner there was a really nice one where we can see the putty it's actually upside down on the sun now you can see it now the flows off it was a lovely baby blue discosome with copper spots all over the top but it's decided to let go and go for a walk so it's left a big ugly thing of putty behind but hopefully the other ones will move over and cover it or i can stick something there See that lava lamp there, it's got some really nice colours, developing quite a lot of pink on it now. That baby one on the bottom is from this one here. So I lifted the skirt up and it was just just fastened on the bottom, so I moved it off and separated it, getting a bit of light and hopefully that will grow into its own decent size one soon. Can't make out in that box, you might be able to. There's a little baby eclectus off one of these over here. I think it was off the one on the right hand side but it's let go so i managed to catch it and that's the beauty of such a low flow tank i managed to just catch it floating around by the bottom edge of the rocks and it's in this little ocean mushroom box now these mushroom boxes are great if there's something you're after or any sort of acrylic frag racks or especially the magnetic frag racks he makes are brilliant and a guy called toby hope his company called little ocean aquatics I'll drop a link in the comments below, but he'll sort you out with anything like that. And again, I can vouch for his stuff. I've used it for a long, long, long time. I've got some magnetic frag racks in my other system, which are probably coming up for seven, eight years old. And the magnets are still sealed perfectly. So yeah, top guy, top guy to deal with. So check him out. All the other stuff's doing really well. I've still got the zoas in here. I'm a little bit undecided what I'm going to do with them. I may move the smaller ones out, but I definitely want to keep the Palithoa grandis in there as they're doing really well and they're just they're just fitting well. They're big polyps. So again, I'm unsure with the zoas, so let me know what you think. If you think it looked better without or moving them and maybe replacing them with some mushrooms, let me know what you think. I'm always open for suggestions and I read all the comments and reply to them all myself. So anything you want to get in touch with me, that's probably good as place as any or i am on instagram and facebook my instagram's at ben cooks reef so i'll answer any questions on there but if any questions specific to this video just drop them in the comments and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can now those are the good bits as you can see i'm really pleased everything's doing really well as i mentioned earlier there's been a few few small issues i had to battle with cyanobacteria a little bit as you normally do and early stages of a tank it got quite aggressive at some point mainly over the front edge of this sand here 
and up this corner and round this like big reductor see if I just pop down you can probably see a tiny bit of pink around the bottom of that rock now I didn't really have the luxury as cranking up the flow etc that I'd, ways I'd deal with it in other tanks as I've mentioned before obviously they're all mushrooms I run really low flow in this tank obviously I run more than it is now it's just off for the purpose of the videos for the top down shots but so anyway I couldn't I couldn't up the flow so I just kept up my weekly water changes I do 10% a week which works out well just over I'll do about 12 14 liters a week with a red sea blue bucket that keeps everything all the parameters constant really other than kh which I'm dosing a tiny bit just between water changes with the dose I talked about earlier calcium doesn't move the magnesium doesn't move between water changes obviously not dosing any trace elements in this tank there's no need really so all I did to get rid of the cyano was just just stick to my solid maintenance schedule you know, not deviate much when it got aggressive I upped the water changes I did two a week and I just siphoned the top of the sand off around this area and just took the top three four mil of sand off and then I just rinsed it out in the bucket gave it a good clean put it back in and that's pretty much got rid of it it's 95 percent gone now it does crop up tiny tiny bit towards the end of the week when i do a water change but it's I'm, i've got that beat now i'm not worried about that the other issue i've had which you can't really see again i'm coming out the other end of it there was um, a little small outbreak of valonia I did have a few, bit of bubble algae pop up on quite a few of the rocks Again, just stick to my maintenance, Don't no knee-jerk reactions, no sudden panicking and chucking chemicals in and vibrant and your red slime remove the cyanobacteria. I don't really think there's much need for that. Just keep everything stable, keep up your water changes. And with the, with the bubble algae specifically, I know you'll read everywhere and people on all the forums of Facebook, you know, you get the panicking, don't pop it, don't burst it, you know, you're going to come down the next day and you're going to look in your tank and there's just going to be bubble algae wall to wall and it's going to overtake everything and you'll never get rid of it etc etc now there's a tiny bit of truth to that but it's only when the vesicles get huge once they get to an inch plus they do contain some spores but even at that size you imagine that spore bursting it's got a that bubble bursting releasing those spores it's got to run the gauntlet of your skimmer if you're using one your mechanical filtration then it's got to settle and land on an area that's not occupied by other algae or other corals. And it's just not something worth worrying about. And at the size most people see it in their tanks, it's just a it's just a non-issue. You can just pop it, burst it, scrape it out. I just go in with a, a dental pick and I just scrape the rock, scrape any off I can see and then just suck them out when I do a water change. But I don't worry, it's not something. I'd quite happily go in and pop a handful of them or pop, 20 30 100 of them and not do a water change it's not something that worries and it's not something in all my years of reefing i've ever had an outbreak or takeover so again just take some advice with a pinch of salt you know the same people will tell you not to pop them are the ones recommending oh only you've got to get an emerald crab or you've got to get a fox face where obviously they don't eat them whole either they pop them exactly the same so i wouldn't worry about it just do what you've got to do, just scrape them out, manually remove them. And again, don't worry too much. Just keep up with your maintenance. Most problems will come and go, especially in the early stages of a tank. You're always going to have algae pop up and, you know, it might be hair algae, it might be valonia. You know, there's always something, but, you know, it'll just keep up your weekly maintenance and keep up what you're doing. And nine times out of ten, it'll sort itself out. Those are the only really issues I've had. Did in the start start of the tank have a bit of a problem keeping phosphates and nitrates steady. Again, it was just the tank settling and maturing. One day the phosphates were up, then it was down. It was just didn't seem to settle. I did have a period of phosphates really low, so I actually dosed a fraction just to keep some in. Just to obviously you don't want to you don't want, especially on a young new tank you don't want to sit at zero for too long because you open the door to worse things than a bit of algae then like dinos. So. I just um, dosed a little bit, but it's it's all settled now. My phosphate levels sitting around 0 0.07 on the last test. Um, that's with a HANA ultra low range checker, and the nitrates on the last test was right around 10. So you know, perfect for this tank. So I don't run a skimmer. I don't just my only filtration really is the water changing. Uh, talking of filtration, actually, I will just show you. I do run 
mechanical filtration on the tank occasionally normally only after a water change or if I'm going to clean the glass and I accomplish this just with a, all there is in there in the first chamber no fancy media baskets I just really don't think they're necessary in these all-in-ones all there is in there is a piece of foam squashed between the two baffles so it wedges at whichever height I want and then some floss just gets dropped on the top just to pick up any detritus that I stir up doing any maintenance there's a little bit of medium and rock in the centre chambers but that's only from that I moved over from my other system just to keep just to add a bit of biodiversity as the tank matures I'll probably remove that so the empty the chambers will just be empty on the back and the last chamber no filtration it's just just the two heaters and the return pump and the tons of auto top up so yeah simple as you like you know I, I believe massively in all reef tanks keeping stuff as simple as you want the more points of failure you eliminate the more reliable the tank's going to be obviously it's only a softy tank if it was all sps you know you may have to down the line you may have to run it slightly different you may have to run a skimmer but it's not something that i'm planning on doing and to be honest with you if I, even if this was sps dominated or a lot more lps i'd run the tank pretty much exactly as it is uh, i think that's pretty pretty much all the negative oh the only other slight thing of issue i've had is these redactors down here I, i've had a couple lose some color uh, and in the end i found out put it down to actually too low lighting so i've upped the intensity over the last three weeks of the radion and the color slowly coming back so it's running right around 35 percent now so my target is 45 percent which gives the tank more or less 100 par right across the bottom so that's what i will work up to but i'll be doing that slowly I do get a bit more par towards the back of the tank because if you look from the side the radion does sit slightly pointed towards the back of the tank now these arms here the arm ships with two different length rails there and I've used the longest one but it's still not quite long enough to put the put the actual fixture in the middle of the tank so I'm hoping I'm trying to order a slightly longer one which will put the light slightly over to the front so it's nothing major it's nothing i'm really concerned about but it will just even the par out towards the front so so it's all good they're really happy with the light excellent lights really pleased with the diffuser as well that's definite in to must really in my opinion especially with a lot of sand it's really i, I run one on my other tank without one and it's not as notable because it's bare bottom but with a lot of the white sand i, I could see a slight like I wouldn't say disco effect, almost like a slight static effect. Just I could just see lines jumping around on the tank on the sand, so the diffuser stops all that, and it's a, it gives off a really nice light. Really, just what I like. So I would recommend one of those. Yeah, good things, good points of the tank. Well, I think it's a good point. Some people might disagree. The mollies have actually bred, and now there's around twenty-five of these little guys in the tank. They're doing fine, swimming round, they're taking flakes, nothing's bothering them. The rats aren't taking any notice of them whatsoever. So I definitely think I'm going to end up with a few more of them in the tank for the long term. A little guy there. So I will be looking to rehome some of those. Might move some to my other, my other tank. Really good algae eaters actually, guys, especially in a tank this size. It's not something, obviously, you can't go ahead and put a tank in here or you know fox face they're not as effective as those types of fish but they do graze at the rocks all day you know, again they're not going to make a huge huge difference but i'll just see them as part of the cleanup crew and they're quite cool to look at cleanup crew wise still i've got the seventh snails i've got the conch over here which keeps the sun perfect there's some trochus snails in here too they're just Good, good solid snails to have good workers so that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching now if there's anything specific you'd like to know about the tank or you'd like me to cover you know I'd, obviously I'd, I'm not going to sit and go through every single mushroom if there's any detail that you more details that you want about a specific one or any care requirements you'd like me to talk about or questions about the equipment or the tank just please drop me a message in the comments. I'll do my best to reply as soon as I can. You, know, you can also get me on Instagram. I'm at Ben Cooks Reef on Instagram. So I'm happy to answer any questions on there. I do post 
update pictures and short videos on there almost daily if I, if I get time. So that's a good place to get me. But yeah, anything anything at all, guys, just drop me a, drop me a message in the comments. So thanks for watching. I yeah, really appreciate the support. If you could give me a subscribe and a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. It really helps me further the channel and hopefully hopefully take it somewhere and keep producing good content. So thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate the support. Happy reefing.